It's an amplifier, network player, network music server if you like, supports over 20 streaming services, is a Rune endpoint and has a 2 times 100 watt class D amplifier to drive about any difficult speaker. The NAD M10 streaming amplifier. The M10 is a complete stereo set and is loaded with features. For a basic setup you only have to connect a set of loudspeakers and link it to your router over the network cable or Wi-Fi. If you have music stored on a shared volume on your computer or NAS, the M10's Blue OS streaming will index it for easy access. The same goes for a USB storage medium connected to the USB-A connector on the rear. You can connect your TV using an HDMI cable to the M10. If you set your TV to sending non-Dolby digital sound and switch on CEC, not only will the sound play over the M10, the volume control of the TV will operate the volume control of the M10. Alternatively, you can use an optical digital cable, the so-called Toslink cable, between the TV and the M10. The Toslink input can also be used for other digital sources like a game console. A CD player can be connected to the SPDIF input or to the analog inputs. The same goes for an MP3 player, computer or smartphone when you use a 3.5 mm jack to double RCA cable. But in this case using either Bluetooth or Apple AirPlay might be more handy since they are wireless. Music can not only be played by the Blue OS player, if you have a Rune Core server the M10 can also function as a Rune endpoint. You then use the Rune app to choose the music and set the volume. Normally the free Blue OS app is used to control the M10. The M10 has a metal housing with Gorilla Glass top and front. This glass is highly resistant to scratching. The M10 measures 215 by 260 by 100 mm and weighs 5 kilos. The front is almost fully covered by the 7 inch full color touchscreen. This reduces the number of controls to zero and on the screen only those virtual controls that are relevant for that mode are shown. These become visible when the proximity of your hand is sensed by the M10. Otherwise cover art or other relevant information on the source is shown. If no info is available, two meters are shown. NAD calls them VU meters, but they are more likely peak meters given the scale used. When we go to the rear we see a more regular layout with left the IEC mains input, the loudspeaker binding post for the right speaker and for the left speaker, a standby button, a mini USB connector for service purposes only, a USB A socket for storage media, the network connector, a button for service purposes only, the HDMI socket, the optical Toslink input, the SPDIF input, two subwoofer outputs, the preamp output, two analog inputs and a trigger in an output. In between the loudspeaker binding post there is a switch labeled bridge mode. When engaged the two amps are combined to one mono amp with double the power. This mono output can be switched to either the left or right channel. One would expect a matching power amplifier for the second channel to be introduced, but there have been no announcements yet. Inside the M10 we see two printed circuit boards. The lower one holds the switching mode power supplies and the two times 100 watt N core class D amplifiers. Centrally placed on the top board is the NXP 1 GHz ARM processor that Blue OS runs on. It also does the processing for MQA. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios are on a piggyback board situated further to the left and will be connected to the antennas when the top is mounted. To cool the power amps two small cooling profiles are mounted on the inside of the sides. The glass top plate leaves a small gap for the heat to escape. Although being rather small the M10 is packed with features. 
it is BlueOS based and thus give you access to countless streaming services you might have a subscription on, internet radio stations and your own music on a computer or NAS. Up to 64 BlueOS players can be connected when using a wired network. When using Wi-Fi the limit is 16, provided there is a very high quality Wi-Fi network. It also does MQA, thus high res audio from Tidal is covered too. Furthermore it supports Bluetooth aptX HD and will do AirPlay 2 as soon as Apple has approved the M10 implementation. A software update will then enable it. The HDMI input also outputs video, showing the cover art, so when playing music you can display the cover art on the TV. When you switch on the TV and adjust the volume, the M10 will automatically switch to HDMI input and the TV remote will control the volume of the M10. One or two subwoofers can be connected to the M10. Then a crossover filter can be set so the left and right channel don't have to produce the sound below the crossover frequency to further improve the sound quality. The M10 doesn't come with a remote control but can learn codes from any normal remote. See if the remote of your TV has unused keys, for instance for controlling a DVD player, and learn these to the M10. But you can also use the BlueOS remote app. It will detect for instance the inputs of the M10 and offer menu options for them. I'll show you. This is the app when the Note 2i is selected. In the left column third entry is my favorites and below that the library and Bluetooth. When I now change to the M10 you see below Bluetooth the inputs of the M10. Volume control is also done from the app. Last but not least. The M10 also offers the direct room corrections software integrated. The needed microphone comes in the box. Let's see how it works. Direct is a patented program to correct for acoustic problems in your room. It lets you measure the room response in a number of places and then calculates a correction in both amplitude and time. Here is how it's done. You first have to download the NAD version of Direct Live and install it on your computer, smartphone or tablet. There are versions for Windows, Mac OS, Android and iOS, currently renamed iPad OS. Then plug in the supplied microphone into the USB socket on the rear of the M10 using an also supplied 3.5 mm jack to USB adapter. When the program is started it will detect the NAD device or devices on the network. We select the M10 and select the M10 connected microphone. Normally you need to select the calibration file, which I did when testing, but while recording this video it was already erased again. Then you set the loudness of the measurement signal so that it's in the low region of the green section. Next you have to decide whether you want a very tight listening area or a somewhat wider area. I chose sofa with a wide imaging. This gives mild average processing and suits my room and listening preferences. Choosing the chair gives a more correct room correction but only for that one spot. The next step is to do the first measurement for which the microphone has to be in the center of the listening position as shown in the illustration. The microphone has to point upwards and if you can avoid it, do not place it on a larger solid object. I mounted the mic on a mic boom with duct tape. It has a thread that fits a camera tripod. After clicking measure selected position, the measurement starts. After three sweeps the result is stored and you can pick the next position to measure. Place the microphone accordingly and start measuring again. This then should be repeated until all 17 positions are measured. The measured positions are ticked so you can see the ones that remain to be measured. 
Then you proceed to filter design. The green line shown here is the proposed target line and as you can see it has a 5 dB slope between 25Hz and 20kHz. For although we would like to see a flat frequency response in our equipment, when measuring room acoustics this curve has been accepted as a good target. The correction calculated by direct will result in the curve behind the target curve. And although it doesn't look like the ideal curve, it's a lot better than without the correction. Do realize that timing information is of great importance to our ears, more important than the frequency response. And direct also does time corrections. You can see the impulse response too. For the next step you proceed to the filter export. You see that I already made two filter curves named one normal and two bass boost. I now overwrite one normal but you could give it another name. If you like you could return to the filter design page and alter the target curve. Let's say I want a lot more bass. I start at 500Hz increasing the curve like this. I could then store that under 2 bass boost and still have 3 filter settings left. This is ideal for trying out several target curves or even do another set of measurements, for instance one optimized for your listening position only and one with the microphone placement all over the room. It does take some time to do it all and you shouldn't do it at 2 am for the measurement signals are played at a loud level. But in most cases the outcome will improve the sound quality since room problems are dealt with to a large degree. Direct life that comes with the M10 is restricted to 500 Hz downward. If you want to influence frequencies above 500Hz you need to buy a $99 upgrade. In many cases the standard version will be sufficient since acoustic problems like room modes are in the lows. Above that I expect mainly speaker problems to be corrected. That might be interesting too if you like to experiment, but then you need to buy the update. I started listening to the M10 in my setup 2 with the sub connected to one of the sub outs on the M10 and the crossover set at 80Hz. This produced a dynamic and full sound with a very slight tendency to the bright side in the higher regions. With the sub disconnected and the crossover switched off, the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeaker still produced a rather impressive low end, of course less deep than when using the RAL T5 sub. Then I took it downstairs and hooked it up to the 5000 Euro a pair Audio Physics Scorpio loudspeakers. And again the sound was impressive, more upfront and not as filigrane like as the 5 times more expensive hardware it replaced. And different in character too. While my setup 1 is best described as romantic, the M10 is more in the category powerful, more like my setup 2. It's my job to judge quality with as little as possible taking into account matters of taste. If I do that I would say that the M10 is entry level set of one quality and that's quite an achievement given the compact size, the features and the price. The small but elegant M10 ticks about all the boxes a modern man or woman would like. Young people use their smartphone to control their life so why not their stereo? Or use Amazon Alexa to voice control the M10. And they don't care for the huge collection of CDs ripped to a computer. They take a subscription to a streaming service and listen to internet radio. That doesn't mean you can't play ripped CDs from your computer or even have it learn a classic infrared remote control. Using BlueOS as a basis offers this and more. The only settings you seldom use will need some browsing through menus, like for instance switching direct filters. Direct by the way is the way to make an acoustically difficult room sound a lot better or compensate for loudspeaker placement limitations normal living rooms might give. Another thing many will like is that you only need this small beauty and a set of speakers to play music listen to radio and improve your TV sound. 
I would be rather surprised if this is not going to be a very popular device. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the link is in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.